Welcome to Five Pints In, the show where we're literally five pints in. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. A little anticlimactic with the uh, the spinny top. So this episode is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in, mil- in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. And to celebrate our uh, partnership right now this month with Manscaped, we're going to play a little game throughout the episode. Uh, and we want the listeners to join in. If you've got a beer in hand, I know a lot of our listeners like to sit back with a beer and drink and listen to us ramble for an hour. Need a drink, Mike. What's that? You probably need a drink to yeah. listen to this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It sounds better when you're having a drink. So anytime we say balls throughout the episode, you've got to take a sip of your drink. Or anything resembling, sounding like in slang terms. Exactly. Like and it... Stay- Maybe. Yeah, and if we miss any, make sure to let us know on Twitter or Facebook um, because we're going to try and catch everyone. So here we go. Manscaped just launched in the UK. We've gone years without using the right tools for the job. You can be one of the first men in England to experience their life-changing products. Now, Connor, you were just saying for 25 years you've been trying to go at it and, <laughs> and it must look like a mess down there until now. Yeah. 100% and I feel sorry for anyone that has ever seen it but now I can get creative um, <laughs> I could just shave one yeah. and leave the other one hairy that's how that's how precise it is yeah I haven't got nicked so Connor's actually working on get, getting the Chelsea badge <laughs> shaved <laughs> that's how precise it is Doing on his ass yeah I, I like the word tools thrown in as well tools um, when we drink tools for your jewels tools for your family jewels yeah I had it last week. I, I already took mine clean off and I've got a full hedge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's because you were going around pumping the couch. And <laughs> when I did it the first time, I found empty beer bottles and crisp bags. And- <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's had their, had their issues with trimming down there. That's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. The Manscaped engineering team has perfected the greatest ball hair trimmer drink. There you go. The greatest ball hair trimmer ever created and just released the new and improved Lawn Mower 3.0 in the UK. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceram- ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. When I tell you this is premium, I mean premium. The battery lasts up to 90 minutes so you can take a longer shave. I know you <laughs> have taken longer than 90 minutes. So put your hands up. Put your hands up if you had to recharge. <laughs> He's plugging it back in the wall. <laughs> Did he do one of them sit-on ones? <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to contact them yourself. Yeah, you got that special edition clip that came with the clips, <laughs> so you can actually pull it that wide apart so you can get everywhere. So here's the thing. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code BISH, that's B-I-S-H, at manscaped.com. Make your testies their besties. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BISH at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. I think that was three or four drinks if anyone's playing catch up. But what we like to do here on the five pints in set is we, off to the side, you're not going to be able to see it, but we've just got cans lined up to keep rolling them in like a conveyor belt. We need two kegs. <laughs> yeah, we do. Anyway. Get a little conveyor belt. Yeah, just keeps feeding them in. If anyone knows how to build one, let us know. But let's let's get to the football, you know. Does, does, does that count? No, there's no way that counts. We're gonna get 20 well, minutes in. I took a drink. Naked. <laughs> <laughs> the manscaped thing. <laughs> the do first. It, do it live on, do it live on the TV. first ever live manscaped that you've seen on a podcast. Everyone will tune into the YouTube for that. We'll watch, me, watch me bleed out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so last last episode, I feel like we sort of we took half an hour to get to Man City and I just can't let that happen again. I mean, they started late. They, they had a week off in the beginning of the season. So I want to, I really want to kick off with Man City this week. And of course we'll get to West Ham and, and all the other news. I don't uh, think you'd want to talk about them at all, mate. Yeah, well, so. no, we've got to, we've got to face it head on because, you know, going into today, uh, we're talking on Wednesday before the, before the Burnley game. Yeah. I was sort of really down about, about it all, but I don't know. We've got to face that Leicester game. There were positives in it. There were a few positives. So let's go back there and, and, and start with that. The penalties were, were 
obviously the negatives of the game. Three penalties, it ended 5-2. If the penalties weren't there, it would have been 2-2. Two, two. Sounds like a, a weird bullshit math but excuse. Three but... penalties and not one of them, one of these diabolical handballs. <laughs> yeah. Was he? No. It was, the, it was all the other side. Although you can't argue whether they were penalties or not because there was contact on all of them. It was the side of the game that we don't like where you can see Vardy even kicking out backwards just in case he was missed. Yeah, Madison did the same thing. You know, Madison I figured it out. I figured it out, though. Um, so, obviously, the players aren't going to change. They get paid more. They're, they're going to care less. That's just how it's been. I care that little now that I think all we have to do is maybe just expand the six-yard box and... Like the penalty spot be taken in the same exact place, but expand the six yard box, maybe make it like a, a ten yard right. box. And if you get tackled in there, then it gets brought back to the tw- 12 and a half, 12 yard spot. Because this this box that a keeper is allowed to handle the ball in is way too big right now. When players are getting tackled in the corner of a box, <clears throat> And then getting a penalty for it. That's why people would rather go down than be one on one with a keeper. I could actually kind of see exactly, that, yeah. Right? Or if it wasn't Make a box, because you see, like that, like I mean, I I don't want to bring up De Bruyne, um, you know, against Wolves when he went down. Like there was contact. It was the same, it was the same exact as there was contact, but it, but he was heading out, wasn't he? He wasn't really gonna. It was Madison collect penalty. the ball. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I'm actually I'm actually sick of all the tinkering of the rules. It's well, that, that's head. what I'm saying. This it's is a... away from football. Right, and and possibly I'm I'm making a statement here. If it wasn't for doing this podcast and enjoying talking football with you two so much, and and getting our points out there and having a bit of fun, a laugh, and a pint, and, and communication with with the fans on on social media about it, I probably wouldn't watch football now. I think I, you, I think you've said something along the the same lines. I think you're just yeah excited about Chelsea this season. Otherwise, no, I'm I'm more excited about football. I'm more excited about the Premier League and how that's gonna advance football. I'm I love that um, in that aspect. But about I the mean, players, like the players coming and and all yeah, that. But then it's like we are bringing in big names, and it's like they can't adjust. No one adjusts to the Premier League straight away. You unless you're like part of that zero point one percent. But like. <clears throat> That those top players are going to come in and dive because they're not used to how tough it is. Mm-hmm. And it's only just going to get a little bit worse and worse as that goes on until you get the oh. few players that come in who are out of this world and stand up and go, oh, that's not a penalty, and will kick a penalty out for a throw and or actually stand up against cheating and never cheat themselves, you know? Mm-hmm. But it can't be a defender. It has to be someone that's always getting thrown I th- about. I think know? it's on the referees, really, to clamp you down. And... No, we can, look, never, we can look, never rely on the referees for anything. Look, look you, you can't rely on a ref, can you? We, we've Ever. made our stand as little as it is. We put a T-shirt out there with the divers on the back. I'm sure there's more divers. There is more divers. There's defi- there definitely about, is, yeah. When you say about... When you say about... <laughs> not that one in the middle. When you uh, say worst about, of all. When you're saying about, uh, you know, changing the penalty box now, this handball thing is diabolical. Can you not see? The, the the thing that gets me, they brought VAR in, right? And it was supposed to smooth things out. It was supposed to fix things. The referees see it as an enemy, for one, because they see it as picking out all their faults. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's AI to them, yeah. Yeah, this is why that's taken so long, for that to sort of calm down a bit and, and to get... And now, now they've got it where this penalty rule, I, I was so fed up that I said, any handball, any time it hits your arm, and then at least it'll be clear, and we'll know it's hit your arm, it's a penalty. You may be unlucky. I know I've said that in the past, but looking at it over the last week especially, and counting how many have been given like that, it's got to be somebody sitting there saying it, was it intentional? Yeah. Intentional. Somebody's <clears throat> got to know... And they've got to be put on the spot and said, it's your decision. Yeah. This is down to you. Now, if the press want to hammer you afterwards because you got it wrong, so be that's, it. That's the way it's going to be. You you decide, or, or at least get a committee, maybe one ex player, two ex players, to say, was it intentional handball? Because it's become ridiculous. And if they don't know what's intentional, what isn't, they tweak a rule. The referees are going by the rules, which is is sad. 
they, it's, they it's like but the, they keep coming out with these new rules and they want to blame the rules. They, it's like they, they oh I don't want to have to make that decision, well, so the, I just want a yeah. rule to, that I can that I can blame this on. You know. Yeah, It'll always be something else. Blame, yeah. When you're saying before about is it the players' responsibility, the rest responsibility? These players today, if they can get away with it, they will get away with it, and they laugh after the game. Mm -hmm. It was funny. Look what I got. I got us a pen. We won one nil. Brilliant. It's like you know? anything. No, I, Steve, Steve no it's, and, it's, it's, it's still in the players. Steve I, Bruce and Roy Hodgson at the weekend went, you know. Yeah. I don't want them given for me, and I don't want them against me. Yeah. Now, something has to be done. Now, because we're in the season already, and there's so many already happened, can you change it now? This is the big talking point. Can you change it now, and then the people have already suffered for, for them? It may be not that important right this second, but what if it's a point at the end of the season... That they go, they get relegated by. That's or they miss Champions League. By. That, that's my biggest. That's my biggest gripe with not having it ready for the beginning of the season. Like it happened last year, and it's probably going to be the same this year with the the League Cup and the FA Cup. The grounds that don't have the technology, they just don't use it, like VAR and stuff like that. So. It to me, it's it's broken from the beginning. And if you change it now, now you've got you've got two, three games into three, four games they into the it season. Was right, George. They thought at the beginning of the season it would be right, and look what's happened. Yeah, but I'm I'm just saying, like I I completely agree with well, changing it right point. now, early enough. But I think that I think the games have been tainted. You know, I think the points have been tainted. I think the the league table's been tainted. I know it it may not seem like yeah, much would now. You, would you sacrifice that for a better game? Well, I'm just. I, I yes I would, but I'm just saying how much of a shit show are we in right now that it's that has come to this like. Well, anything could be better. That's why yeah. I'm talking about changing. The why box. why did they change the ham the handball rule? Here, pin here. Can I just hear pin? Um, if it's they're saying it, it's an extension of your body, okay. If you're making your body bigger, okay. It's natural to jump with your hands. I watched the NBC and I seen Rebecca and the two Robbies talking about it, saying you have to use your arms to jump. Right, one hundred percent. Yeah. Right. So if the ball gets headed in the box accidentally against your arm, you've got to have your arms up there. They're given a penalty. What happens when you jump with your arms and you accidentally hit someone in the face? Accidentally, is that a foul or is that an accident? Do you give a penalty for that? See, um, I think I think it 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 comes down to intention. I know where you're going with this. Yeah, but attentions. Intentional handball or intentional hit in but, face. but with VAR, you can you can rewind and slow down, and you can. I mean, I know intention is. Well, some it, players it, are smarter and know when to elbow someone. You to, see it though, like you can see. It, it, there's something unnatural when someone tries to f tries to uh, fabricate a, a fake push in the face or something. You you see it. Yeah. You, you you can read their body language. You see it on their face. I know what I know what you're leading to is we spoke about this actually on the phone the other day. You you're saying if it touches your hand at all, it should just be a penalty. Well, that's what I said in the beginning, just to clear it up. So there was no farcical two minutes waiting. Is yeah. It, is, you know what? I just thought at least we'll have a decision. It's just unlucky. I it's think unlucky. I think go back three, four seasons. There wasn't anything wrong with the handball rules they had about how about proximity and about uh, you know whether it was intentional or not. It's just that they got this new toy in that's VAR, and they've thought, how can we screw this up? even more how can we mess with how can we use this to our advantage how can we use this to create jobs for people who you know like now the referees on their day off when they when they're not refing a game they can get you know they, they they now have a job to do in the var room and whether they get paid more for it or not i don't know but i know they're on some crazy salaries well i mean it's not, not I say, crazy. i mean i i hate to go back to it because i only just thought of this like 20 minutes before the episode but I, I still think my solution solves that as well. If, I mean, anything out the six-yard box is an indirect free kick. So there'll be less people complaining. You know, once indirect free kicks get, you know, like once people are used to them and they figure out how to defend them, because it is still kind of a, a huge benefit. Once they start learning how to defend them, then people will start, stop diving, you know, because they won't be as close. Like if you've got people like Edison... Mm. No one's getting in his six yard. Box, yeah, you're you know? saying you're saying it's not it's not fair that if you get a penalty in the corner, like by well, the yeah, goal by the touch well, line. Yeah, but this is this is still delving into. I think it kind of cl clears up this whole like how annoying it is <clears> that I mean, like we were talking about Havertz, how when they equalized, when they got the third goal, how it hit his arm, and it's like, see that if that was Liverpool or 
uh, Man City. That, it that's it would have been disallowed. Week, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got offended. You I was were, like, "Is Chelsea not a big enough yeah, team?" Yeah, yeah. You had a good point. Like, the, like we oh, were we yeah. were saying, like, because that when it touched Havertz's arms, by the standards, technically that goal shouldn't have counted because it's touched an attacker's right. arm. It's been brought back for less. Yeah, yeah but look, big, the biggest difference for me, right? It Lindelof's one was was dis- a distress. Yeah, against but Palace. I used chip. Was it going in? Was it going on goal? When you see, uh, was it, um, who was the Everton player ahead of it? Was it Dina, left back? And it, uh, yeah, uh, and it hit his arm. Against Palace. And his arm. That's not a header for goal. No. Andy Carroll's header wasn't a header for no, goal. No, 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 no. But he's all, he, he played someone in. And he was, oh, he was play, play, yeah. blatantly in. Yeah, yeah. The header that hit the hand, the, the last penalty. Yeah. Okay. See, this is, this is the grey area. I mean, he still get. could have missed it. It was bouncing yeah, towards him. Exactly. You know? But if, it, if it's a shot that's going on target. You know, then you've got to look at it yeah. as it affected the game, even if it is an accident. Yeah, but it's that... arm, as it affected the game, could that have been going in? It's stopped by an illegal part of your body, even if you meant it or not. And and I, I honestly, I can't understand why people are saying, oh, they will be that clever that they'll start learning to head it against people's hands. How do you know where people's hands are going to be? Yeah. Do you think Andy Carroll wasn't heading that back across for yeah. somebody to score late on in the game? Do you think he's thinking or Same he's going with Maguire? Oh, yeah. If he jumps, Eric Dyer, if he jumps underneath the ball again, which he does, he did it for <laughs> Calvin Lewin's goal. Yeah. And he, he did it again with Andy Cavalier. If he jumps, because he isn't a centre half, is he? Well, this, I mean, this this goes into where do you give the yellow card then? If it's deliberate, or do you give a red card? Like, remember Suarez against um, Ghana, I believe, in the World Cup, where he, he could have slapped it off the he line. He could have headed it, but he yeah. handled it. Where, where do you give the yellow and red card with for the sending off? Because, like you just said, if they're smart enough, if someone comes to me and I have the ball in the corner and he's trying to, and I'm facing him, I could literally just flick it up to his hand. If he's on a yellow card, and that's, you know, and that's... In See, to me, rules. that's that's why... That's why we... No, that's where the refs have to know. Did he just flick it up on his hand? Or what was if it, he was trying to go was past it intended him? to be a cross? Was it intended to flick over but, and to go by Exactly. Him? Then was there's, it intended for a shot? Then no. there's that one that's time... I like I I just want to go back four seasons to and where we were using proximity and intention and but now we have VAR to to say you can see that in somebody's body language you can see in you can see intention I know it's I know it's all obviously internal like but you'd have to be not it's not like Brad not Pitt's friggin in there in the box with his acting skills there and, is people that are good at the I biggest mean, thing that's missing falling, the biggest thing know. that's missing common sense. See, yeah. that's common sense. Well, no, pride, it. dignity. That's the biggest thing that's missing with these people. With these, you're, you're talking about play, the players or the refs. Let's go back, and we will go back to positives about Man City. George. Yeah. It didn't take us long to get away from there, did it? <laughs> no, hey, it's okay. It's okay. It's not interesting, interesting to talk about anymore, are they? Once you got into referees, Connor's going to end up, like he said, coming out in his refs outfit. Yeah. It's okay. I, I I really just set it up so we could deflect Man City's right. poor performance. We're going to win with that one. I, I, whatever I, they do, I'd love to referee change. a Premier League game. Yeah. Whatever get... they do, whatever they change, they're going to find something wrong. Something's going to be wrong. Right. We know the biggest issues in football. Refs are idiots. Players are cheats. Yeah. Right. Till all that stops. The refs can stop the cheats by brandishing cards. The cheats can help the refs by not cheating no more. <clears throat> yeah. You know, the refs can be helped by ex-players giving them advice. Yeah. I don't know whether they're getting it, whether they do or they don't. It doesn't look like they do. It doesn't do. seem it. The, here's the thing, though, because any... And I'm... I'm I don't know if you, you guys agree with this, but any ex-player now who gets any airtime... They just fall in line because they don't want to. They don't want to seem like they're that's, going against I'm Sky Sports that. or B yeah, or B. Twenty-six episodes. Yeah. <laughs> We've done that one to death, haven't we? Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying it works the same in this context yeah, too. Any 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 player that said, "Hey, you're you're in charge." It's, that's what no, no, you could no, no, do no, anonymous no, 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 though. But I I like that it will be the players now because now they, these have certain ties to clubs. Now they, they've been they've been in the st- they've been in the spotlight before yeah. to where they've got the abuse. Now it's like, can you handle this? You know, because I, I hate to say it, like we just said, refs are stupid. Yeah, they are. Whatever. Like, but they're stupid for picking that job. That you're only gonna get abuse. You're only gonna get mm-hmm. like people yelling at, at you. I I wish the we could make refs obsolete. We're slowly doing it with linesmen right now. I don't think refs are the problem. Like you're saying with booking players and that, it's human error. During the game, and that's fine. I'm fair. Like, if he is an honest man, I'm fair. 
I'm fine having a ref, um, ref the game, right? But afterwards, if we see it with the thousands of cameras that we have on everything, with Suarez biting someone, how can we charge him after the game, but we can't charge someone for a handball or something that the mm-hmm. ref didn't see, you know? You know, why, why can we charge some things and not others? Because how far do you go back? Because it's ref... Well... I mean, we see the game. We're watching the game. But from... now they have VAR. They could do that right. They could actually do that right away. Okay, but they could also do it within the net before the next game. Yeah. Within seven days. I just you know, it's very easy. They're, they're... Everyone sees it. Yeah. An hour after the game. But then you say, okay, you give that person a red card, but they still played the whole rest of the game. So now you still haven't fixed but, it. But it's a step in the right direction. I. If he's done something to deserve the yeah. red card, he needs to <clears throat> not play ne- the next game. I saw something actually like S- Scott Parker, right? I mean, you know, he's not he's not exactly a fan favorite, but he said something that made a lot of sense. He said football is trying to achieve perfection and we don't need to achieve perfection. I said this actually when VAR came in. So, he was obviously listening to me, but um it's like they're trying to achieve perfection with everything. So, like nobody can be wrong and every little thing is 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 pinpoint perfect and you're never going to have that as human beings even Especially when we we're, we're the never game, the game's becoming sterile. Yeah. Well, that's what. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's going to end up. It's going to end up an occasion, like like the American sports. See, I, a, I disagree. It's not a game. It's an occasion. It's going to end up. It's going that way. I'm telling you. <laughs> See, no, I I think I think technology with like science and everything with the sports scientists with technology with VAR. I think that that's obviously grown the fastest it's ever grown ever. Never mind in football. Right. So I think it's just it's like how we were after Y2K. You know, it's like. We, we are slowly adapting to it and then now we're just booming and it's every year is just the new thing so I think football is like kind of like what civilization civilization needs to do because it is the biggest sport and the, most people play it in the world so we are going to get the most money and we can't go back to being as civil as we are because too many people care about it and too many people have too many different opinions yeah I just too many with, people have too much money, with, with more rules comes more loopholes right and any human's going to exploit loopholes to their advantage 100%. I mean we see it we see it with 100% it's what we do naturally yeah but, but then it then it comes to yourself to you as a player or you as a owner of a franchise to say do I take that loss for the sport like like Scott Parker obviously loves the sport and he's yeah. saying this is kind of ruining it. I just want to take it back to the old days. Mm-hmm. Where I'm kind of the opposite where I want to see it progress because they've already figured out how to cheat. To but not so far. but not progress in the way that it's progressing though. Like it, you're saying like yeah, take see, a... Yeah, I know, but I mean you're talking about VAR. VAR is only the last few years. They've been... Dude, the, I remember there was a Man United and Chelsea game about five years ago that me, me you and him, me and you and dad were watching Ian whatever. And it got 20 minutes in, and I literally looked at both here. This was before VAR. This is when they still had, like, the fourth man Mm -hmm. on the line. The fifth man on the line, whatever. And I literally walked out at 20 minutes. I'm like, I'm so done with this game. I can't. There's there's so much cheating. There's so much diving. The the ref's horrible. Like, this needs to be fixed. And I think VAR and all this is the right way to go. I think it's just worth taking a step back to take two steps forward. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing to play about now, but... It just, know. it just. So the VAR settled down a bit. It but is, they're, it they're, is. But they're changing other things. Yeah, to yeah. Get back into play again, you know. Yeah. It's still now the same. Look at the ref going over to the screen. He's probably mm-hmm. jogging over there, going, "Oh Jesus, fuck, for fuck's sake!" It's <laughs> Have you noticed how sometimes? Yeah. Like, yeah. And he's the ref. Yeah. Why does he want to be a ref? Why does he want to officiate? If he doesn't want to do that, he doesn't want to be the one to say, "Oh, it was left on me." I can imagine him in the same form when they go. Oh, it's a tight one. This one's on you. Yeah. <laughs> Get the fuck. Make a decision. <laughs> Don't make me run over there. I've got a funny run as it is. <laughs> it's funny though when because they show the ref looking at the screen, and sometimes they don't show the right angles. Yeah, you know. And I've seen calls been, but it's like a two teams that aren't fighting for Champions League, so no right. one really cares about it. Yeah. Well, because of the rules, the Eric Dyer one, I seen the ref screen. It was just as the ball was on his arm, just up there. And he looked at it. He, well, yeah, it's on his arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's, all, I mean? so it's all perspective. What, what happened to it? Yeah. You know, it's, it's just his recollection of what happened before that. Yeah. And he's not supposed to know it's going to happen, so he's not thinking like that. I think well, every ref needs a compatible double that sits in a box and watches the same replays that we does and tells him right in his ear. He doesn't have to go look at his screen 
And each I rush. I was supposed to be doing a VAR, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's such a. <laughs> I think they should get a little room you and they should rewind box. it. Yeah. You want another box in there? They go from him to VAR. And then the VAR monitors the VAR people and there's video on them. Yeah, you're going to need a lot of fireworks. <laughs> yeah, it's like a Rus- the Russian dolls just like a VAR going down. <laughs> anyway, mate, positives about Man City. Nathan Ake. Nathan Ake, yeah. I mean, let's just. Probably the only positive, apart from Kevin De Bruyne, who had no support and cast. Yeah. So, honestly, I think the a positive I can take out of that Leicester game, and I can only say this after watching City Burnley today in the Cup, perhaps realised, first of all, how important Fernandinho is just as a presence on the field, because on the pitch, because... As soon as he took Fernandinho off, and there was a little bit of a spat, and there was, you know, Fernandinho wasn't happy. He didn't shake Pep's hand. Um, Pep put his hand out, and he, he he dismissed it in the Leicester game. The game. Well, he dismissed it, and I watched it, and he sort of stuck his arm out, but he didn't shake hands. Yeah, but he wasn't happy, was he? I mean, no, the... he wasn't. Why but, would you be happy? But look, because Fernandinho like almost understood how the game was gonna. Well, I mean, you know, you can say he did or he didn't, but it's almost like. The game changed after that because it's not easy on City and it's not easy on Pep when we've got all these injured players. We've got no striker right now. I, I do want to talk about Liam Delap a little bit too because cause he had some impressive moments. But just overall, it was, you know, you you take Fernandinho out who was, like, you, you, we had a weak defense, right? We had, we had, uh, Garcia shouldn't be playing at all. He should never pull on the City shirt ever again. He said he wants to leave. I, I think... Not not his playing, just overall that sends bad vibrations through the team. I think. I, you've always said you've always said when he's next to Carl Walker. Yeah. Things, things go wrong. Carl Walker to me needs a leader next to him, and and today when Fernandinho played centre back against Burnley, Carl Walker had that leader next to him. Laporte is incredible. He doesn't need a leader. Mendy, I think, is coming back. You know, he's, for some reason, I don't know what it is. I think Kyle Walker is honestly world-class, but I just think he needs that voice in his ear saying, don't, you, you, you're drifting, you're drifting, or whatever it is. I mean, I might I be... What he has, mate, I think what he has, and I've watched him do it for England, he's got that electric pace that he thinks he's always going to recover. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's, I've even watched him, what was it? I've even watched him give players a start. No. Yeah. Gonna he's going to make it, him. yeah. When he just buy him and he's confident that he's going to I mean, look, there. eight times, yeah, out, eight times out of ten, he gets there. But look, when you've when he's got Foden in front of him, Foden will track back. When he's got Mahrez in front of him, Mahrez is not tracking back. You know, and and I don't blame Mahrez. He's been one of our best players since the the, the start of the season. But you know, I I mean, I've just got. I feel like I'm going in all different directions with this right now. Yeah, but big for me, mate, we missed, and I hate to say it, this early. We missed David Silva's guile. I agree. I think, but I think. I don't keep saying it like we did with company. <clears throat> no, 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 no. no. Replaced company, haven't replaced no, company. No, you, Bernardo Silva. Bernardo Silva's gonna fill that hole, but he just yeah. came back today. Yeah, He's been no, injured, yeah. so. He wasn't there, yeah. Here's the thing. Miss yeah, you know, definitely miss it, and his and his and his experience. Here's the thing. Foden isn't a direct replacement, and I've realised this because no. Foden. People are putting that pressure on him, and he doesn't deserve yeah. that. Agreed, but even just, yeah, the style of his play, he pushes forward way more aggressively. He pushes forward more like De Bruyne than David Silva ever See, did. That, the thing is, he's getting, he's doing better things than like what Pogba does. So people start going, oh, Pogba's this, Pogba's that. Let's compare him to Pogba. Yeah. He's, he's, Look, he's got a better stat F- Phil Foden, a completely different Phil player, Foden you know? to me is incredible. He's he's only going to get better and he, and he plays extremely well. And I like him on the wing because of his, pre- his pressing. He's like Wilshire. He's but, exactly but like Wilshire. But David Silva didn't press, which meant he wasn't out of position when the ball was turned over, you know? I mean, he pre- he pressed as far as... He wasn't lazy, but he wasn't, he wasn't where Foden was, where Foden's chasing everything, you know? So... Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we do miss David Silva. I think Bernardo Silva is more of that kind, and I wouldn't mind seeing Foden on the wing and Bernardo Silva in the middle where, where David Silva would play. And that gives De Bruyne the free roam he had when he played next to, when he played next to David Silva. And, and honestly, Rodri behind him and Fernandinho at centre-back, I really don't mind it. You know, last year, I complained about it a little bit because, well, to me, I always thought Stones should have been the the heir to that company throne, but he just wasn't, right? And then Otamendi should have used his experience to, to fill that void, and he didn't. 
Do you? A lot just signed Ruben Diaz, is it? Ruben Diaz, yeah, just signed for what was it, sixty? I know Otamendi went the other way, but we still now we've got Ake Stones, Laporte, Fernandinho, <laughs> Stones, drink up, guys. Yeah, that's like, I think that's like four times. So. I said Stones before as well, so that's two drinks. Alright. Alright, so that's a gimme, we got him. Yeah. Ake Garcia and Ruben Diaz. Not, not as four quality centre backs there, supposedly. Yeah. And what you ever say about Garcia, if Barcelona want you, they must see something. I just don't see it. I don't see it. Well, it's, it's, he's the ideal centre back for Barcelona. It, yeah, for yeah. the for the Liga, really, yeah, you know, ninety to ninety five percent possession, and he, he can play football. You, you see know? what I what I thought with him, Kyle Walker and Mendy, very similar penalties, just just ridiculous. Both got to be penalties. Yeah. No matter what, no matter what, Madison and Vardy. I I agree. Both got to be penalties. But Garcia's was a lack of awareness where Vardy was. Coming yeah. From behind him. yeah. 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 You know what? I thought it was more of an accident than anything. But yeah. he has made contact and brought him down. But well, that's a lack of awareness. You've got to adjust yourself to get your body in the way. Yeah. Not your legs. Not your legs. Get your body in the way. And he'd have ended up being fouled. Yeah. The way Vardy was coming in. Right. I still see... I, st- I still think all those penalties... I just think the the attackers got the better of the defenders by, by diving. Like, yeah. I think... I think... All right. You asked me if those are penalties... 20 years ago when I think I had a solid foundation on what a penalty actually was. When you were five? <laughs> yeah, maybe, but that's when probably penalties that's when penalties were like actual penalties. Yeah, you probably wouldn't have given any of them. No. I mean, I, yeah, the player, no, the player probably would have tried to stay on his feet. Uh, that's my point. Could that's but that's, that's not the game. That's not the game anymore and it, that's just the fact of it, isn't it? Like yeah, I, I, those were penalties. We've seen a lot worse. We've seen a lot worse from City players as well. No, like no, no, I, you can't say that they weren't. In no. Days, you can't say they weren't penalties. In yeah. Days. You know what? You know what? Someone someone needs to come out with like a, a documentary or something like to how the human falls over at certain speeds and whatever. You know, like how they did <laughs> yeah. with Ronaldo? Yeah, yeah. How they compared him to like a, a sprinter and all that? Yeah. They need to do something where they study football players. And why, why is it that like, because I, I hate going to England and having a conversation with someone that plays rugby. Cause I feel so interfered, like cause I, yeah. I feel like I'm watching. I mean, I yeah, hate, I yeah, hate, I, I, yeah. I hate the aspect about I just, sport. Yeah, just, I love football so. I love the football side. I hate the when human we, emotion that, side. That is when we used to have that argument, Tom. When I was playing, our comeback was football is tougher because there's more injuries happening in football. Yeah. Because you, Boots flying. Well, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. So, so that was at least that. And that there's was more the free think. There's more free thinking in football to where. But now you can't. You can't have that argument. I know. You, you just can't have the argument. It's just. It's yeah. not there. I mean, how many times? How many times have you been in it? Uh, been in England and you've been watching football, or you've been in a pub and you just you, you hate watching it and you see the rugby out of the corner of your eye or something. You flip the channel. And you enjoy it ten times more. You see the way they talk to the refs. They talk to the refs like he's a school teacher. Uh, yeah, but to me, yeah, I, 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 yeah. The refs treat them like treat them like men. Yeah, yeah. The refs and and exactly. they come on the mic and explain the decision they give. It, exactly. Yeah. You know, for everybody to to understand and exactly. Say, yeah. It's still though. Have, yeah. With all that said, though, nobody's switching to rugby, are they? Just from football, like I, 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 I couldn't. I, I don't know. I personally, may, I may be personally, days. personally, I can't watch the rugby. And I mean, five, I don't. Two of your shoes in. I just don't watch. I don't watch football for the physicality. But yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. The creativity. You watch football, football, but yeah, rugby can be that in a. No. Uh, well, it mm, can create the creativity. It's not. The, it's not as fluid, it, is it? No, it's not as free thinking like I just said. But it's. It's. It is. It is. Yeah. But one but, thing... I mean, it's not... there's, a, there's a better camaraderie in the rugby today than there is. It's always been brilliant in the rugby. I remember yeah. when you were little, we went to... I don't know if you actually remember. There was a, a like a Sunday League rugby game in Chigwell. And, I mean, I've, I've seen, no, seen just... these things. I've seen these things, you know. They're, they're all in the bar afterwards together. Yeah. Teams together. Singing songs and, and pranking each other. <laughs> And I, I just remember there was 
there was like families in there and then one of the teams was playing a drinking game and I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing <laughs> yeah one of the lads had I think you're not allowed to call rugby rugby football yeah well, that's what it was back then anyway if you mention the football word in anything yeah yeah I, you had to drink your pint down in one and it must have been this forfeit not down one, no. <laughs> no. Wait, this fellow must have been on the forfeit. And he got a chair and he pulled it out away from all the tables. So he's in full view of everybody. Yeah. He's standing on the chair with his keks and his undies by his ankles. He's got toilet paper wrapped around his nuts. <laughs> Is that Manscaped? Drink up. <laughs> yeah. was he, he wasn't trimmed, though, toilet because this was 20, 20 years ago. And, and then it was hanging down touched the floor right so he's standing on the chair what was the toilet paper was oh hanging okay down. okay so it was wrapped around his nuts <laughs> and then it was hanging down to touch the floor and he had a pint in his hand and they lit the toilet paper on fire and he had to finish his pint before he put the fire out wait who blew it out though that's what that's the questionable part <laughs> i don't think you did it in time he cheated a little bit because when he got near the end I yeah getting, getting close and that's how people used to take care of their their trimming their manscaping yeah. <laughs> by flame <laughs> yeah so i want to i want to move on so the physical just the the point of physicality i, I want to move on from rugby because i mean you know I, right, it's not a rugby show it's not it's like talking about money united we really don't yeah Exactly. I mean, you know, the rugby is what it is. I don't mind it, but no, I, I would like to talk about Man United and what happened in their first game of the season. But I mean, we can talk about that in a bit. But what I do want to get to though is is Liam Delap, and I don't want to like bull him up too much, but I just want to make one point. At the at the end of last season, City went through a phase where we were whipping balls in to uh, Jesus, and even earlier we were whipping them into Aguero. Nobody's there to head it. Liam Delap had a had a, a chance off the crossbar, and he, he, there's actually someone in the box trying to head the ball. And I know he's not he's not there yet, and I you know he's not he's not there technically yet. He's not there, you know, skillfully yet. But at least it, it was just refreshing seeing a ball whipped in. I think it was I want to say it was Mendy off the left side, yeah, and he and he beat both centre backs to the ball. It reminded me of Jacko kind of. Not I, again. I don't want to. I'm, I I can't stand no, people no, no. You, taking seen, these young city seen, players yeah, and yeah, saying, yeah. you know, you've seen something different. It's like, uh, oh my god, what was it? West Ham Wolves. Antonio yeah. pulled out of a header, which yeah, he yeah. would have scored. Yeah, and it's it's one of those where, and you think Antonio, the likes of him, the big right, group right. that he is. He's not going in for a header. Yeah. You know, but it was just refreshing seeing yeah. Liam Delap. He's 17 and a half years old, and he's gone know. in and he's jumped in for the header. And, it, it, you know, it's hit. It's come off the bar, which is fine. But it was I mean, just... Look at Ake. Ake looked like he went in closing his eyes. You yeah. Know? I think I think it's going to be tough for him, mate. To oh, break through. I, I agree. I think it's going to be tough because we're not going to change... Pep isn't going to change his outlook. When he's got everybody there... When everyone's be, there, but I'm saying we, intricate. Yeah. Uh, and but look, you know, that's great to have that option. What he's got to do to get on there, he's got to develop that other side of his game. Yeah. And and that that physicality, that height, that that uh, you know uh, strength in the air. Yeah, and confidence. That's got to be his bonus. Yeah. That's got to be a bonus. He's got to learn to be a great on Jesus first. Yeah. And then that be. The other thing that we look but, for. Yeah, but oh. what I'm saying is look at the injuries to Jesus and, and Aguero. And for some reason, in the second half of last season, we decided to whip balls. And we did it against Madrid as well. And, I mean, you know, it ended up working out against Madrid. I did say wow. balls. Whip That's balls. a drink. My point is, though, with Aguero and Jesus injured, I think I think he'll start against... I think the lap will start against Leeds. I just... It, to me, like, Jekko was a super sub, wasn't he? Like he came on and he was physical and he, but he was technical. I would have t- Unfortunately, I, I yeah. Always say, because it, bring, bring Chelsea. yeah, because because we had a short team back then. You know, I mean, like Nazri and Tevez and Aguero, Nas, who would who would take the ball off. Yeah, the only thing he could do, and then put it short. Yeah, look, it's just oh, nice. On the floor, it's yeah. it, you know, talking about City, we can we can talk about like domination over the past few seasons. Decades. The Premier League is catching up. Not not the Premier League. I mean that sounds 
a, a bit big headed, but the, we're in a we're in a sense where City are going to need that person off the bench, that extra option yeah. that whip the balls in. Let's let's hope he doesn't become that person off the bench. Though, like well, I mean, head. I'm just saying because, he's because look, what, what's happened today is going to tell you who's going to start because against Leicester. Sterling was a non-entity as a centre forward, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Non-entity as a centre forward. I'll tell you why. Not just his fault. Leicester came and defended deep, but numbers behind the ball. Yeah. Right? Sterling's attribute is best out is his pace. Getting behind. There's no space behind there. If it gets intricate, he struggles. Yeah. He doesn't have that. He doesn't have that. Touch. Football brain. Yeah, the touch. Yeah. It, well, well, you know, he doesn't have that. But. Leeds are going to be open, man. They're not going to sit like Leicester. Yeah. And he's got himself two goals today, again. And should have had six or seven. He's got himself two goals, and he's going to get... <laughs> That's he's always going to get, the case. He's going to get goals against Leeds, I'm telling you. Yeah, I, I agree. Goals from that same position. But I, they will be open. I think De Lapp will play some part, whether he comes on or he doesn't, because Leeds are a physical team, just fresh on the championship. See? And I think it'll be an option. You know, I don't know how it's going to go Saturday. I'm... I'm iffy. You know, it's my first time actually. We're, we're going down the pub for the game for the first time, showing my face oh, in a City shirt on. this season. And hey, you joke me. I'm going in a Chelsea shirt. I know. I'm saying me. me. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm just saying there's. It's. It's gonna be. It's. I'm not. I'm not extremely confident about the game. We can beat Leeds. No, we'll beat Leeds. What he means is the last two years it, he's been bragging. Be, <laughs> we'll beat Leeds. We'll beat Leeds. It might be four nil or four three. I, I, it it I won't had, be four nil. I had three nil. It won't be four. It won't be. It, Leeds will score. Leeds will no, score. No, they won't. Leeds no, will they score. A hundred percent. Leeds they, are going to score. Out, they came out the gate blazing, and then they took the foot off the pedal. One game. Yeah. One match against Sheffield United. They and they didn't score, but okay. that. They're not going to do that against. I, I think Biel, I think Bielsa is is Look, on if a... they go to Anfield, if they go to Anfield and play open football, they did at home against yeah, Liverpool as well. Yeah, exactly. Le- Leeds be exactly the same against Man City. He's yeah. gonna he's gonna go. No, nah, no, nah, I promise. He's gonna go to Leeds. He's gonna go to a City hoping for a one nil defeat. It's at, no. It's at he's Leeds, gonna. Right? He's, he's it's gonna, at, yeah. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. I mean, like he's gonna go play City. Like I, he's gonna. Yeah, I should have clarified yeah, he that. He, he's gonna he, he's gonna want for a what he's gonna Jose Mourinho this he's gonna want for a one nil defeat he's not and he's gonna I think he's gonna be a pop up I think you're completely wrong happens. and I will bet you Leeds score a goal how much do you want to bet I don't know we I feel like we run into this bet every every episode you have to you have to shave your balls into a Chelsea logo <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that skilled but um don't worry you can use your balls as the volleyballs that yeah. you have. On the side. But um, they're not volleyballs; they're old footballs. Yeah, the, the volleyballs. But though. yeah, so I mean, it's it's iffy. I think you're right though. Sterling getting in behind—that's a good point because Leeds will. I think Leeds will be open. They'll be and, open. And Sterling getting in behind. I just hope. If, I, if he puts his chances away, he'll get two goals. You, you think? Yeah. You think a team that just came up from the championship? They did who, it against Liverpool in the first game of the yeah, season. Liverpool, not Man City. They uh, went. Yeah, uh, Liverpool, feel, yeah, Liverpool, not Man City. We all saw what Liverpool was like last season. No matter what, like if if you if you looked at last season and went, okay, Liverpool are better than City, you shouldn't be managing a team. Yeah, okay? he obviously saw Man City with all that happened to them. They're still going to be the better team. He did what he did against Liverpool. He went out with a bang, and it was great. And but he's not going to do that against it. He's not going to risk the the goal deficit at the end of the season. They just came up to the I think league. I think with City's defensive yeah. issues right now. That, that could be a 7 different. Yeah, yeah, seven, I don't think you'll play any different. Game it could go either way though. This out. could be a 4-3-5-3-4. Four, three, three, four. Who knows? This is going to ruin everyone's predictor on the NBC app because honestly, it, City's defense right now, I think Laporte I hope Laporte and I think he will start. But but who starts Fernandinho at centre back maybe? You you're also not taking into consideration that I mean yeah whatever the stats are um, when Liverpool have the ball they don't do anything dangerous with it they they can move side to side and then when it gets to Mane they'll do something or if Salah opens up they'll they'll throw him in you know uh, Firmino will come short and then he'll yeah. do something magical. Anytime any City player no matter even if it's Garcia or one of the young kids you you still. The other team has to be nervous on the ball because there's always someone like De Bruyne 
Bernardo Silva, Mars, whatever, doing something off the ball that like. But look, we yeah, so but we're weak at the back. So why wouldn't they just play well, open? Yeah, I know, but you're gonna have seventy percent possession while attacking. Yeah, and, and that's very no other look, team I, has I, really. Look, I I I hope I hope so. Um, like Barca when Pep had. Them. I I hope so. I I, I hope I mean, you're right, I but. Think yeah, I think it, it'll baffle me if a team like Leeds can come and shake you guys because I sit here and I tip. I, if I had a fucking hat, I'll tip my hat to you guys because I put you guys above Chelsea all the time because I appreciate football more than my own team. And you guys are just playing it the best I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'll be so baffled. If, if we're talking about Chelsea, yeah, I would say the same thing, but not you guys. I haven't said, I haven't said Leeds will win. I, I've said City. No, no, I know. I, yeah, I... Or four, three. I think Leeds get two shots, maybe one's on goal. And Edison no. cleans it up. Yeah, no, I, I'm playing gonna... decent football. I think he'll stick to. I think he'll stick to what he what he thinks is the right way to play, no matter who they play. Yeah. Well, Sheffield United did it last season, didn't it? <clears throat> but, yeah, beautifully. Okay. Yeah, but this beautifully. is the thing. Beautifully. I was impressed with Sheffield United last season. Well, that's the thing with these. It was innovative, these, you know. With these managers that are coming up from the Championship. You can tell that you, you can tell if a team's going to stay in the um, which I think Leeds will on their manager. You're, I don't think a manager as smart as him, who I think could have. Uh, you're basing this. In you're basing Leeds off one in, off one game, though. No, I saw I saw quite a bit of them in the um, in the championship. Yeah, they they play. I mean, and I, and it, I, look, he's supposed to be a little bit nuts, isn't he? Yeah, and he's well I respected know. by Pep. I think he's going to see it. Nuts. You said nuts. nuts. There you go. Yeah, we even have the little trimmer for the little nuts for this <laughs> game. I think he's going to see it as a chance to prove himself and let everybody else know who he is and what he's about. Yeah. Or it's best it's the best challenge challenge for him. Nah. But everybody's saying Pep's the best around, which he is. He's going to say, "I'm going to show you." I was Pep. No, nah, no. Nah. Time before Pep. No, nah, I think I think Arteta had that mindset. In a but, sense. but Arteta wasn't Pep and before Pep. No, Arteta no, think, learned from I Pep. Think, I think Arteta was the only person that can go, I can outplay Pep. And he did, in a sense... Sloppily. Be- yes, yeah, sloppily. Because you can't outplay Pep <clears> because <throat> you can't play Pep, Pep. You can't outplay Pep. You can't out Pep play Pep. Pep. Because <laughs> he's he's way too revolutionary. He's, he's too far ahead of our times. You're not going to... Yeah. If you get one over on him, it's, it's going to be one. Is it- He's going to figure out what you did. Pep. And then the next time you play in the league, he's going to absolutely annihilate you if he doesn't have all these What do you Okay, okay, in this him. in this vein though. I hate back Brent, City, Brendan Rodgers just I hate back Brendan Rodgers just just took his first win over Pep at the Etihad 5-2. Yeah. So why couldn't Leeds no who Aguero, to me Leeds No um Yeah, we've got no Aguero on no, Saturday. No Jesus We've got no players. No, yeah, I know. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't. Yeah, I cut you off before you could ask your question. Well, I'm just saying, if if Brendan Rodgers can do it, which to me, Leicester, I mean, they've got more Premier League experience, but they're not as expansive as Leeds are. You know, I what mean, they're mean? they're counter attacking. They can be. They're, Leicester, they're, Leicester, are, Leicester are the most. They 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 shut down, which Leicester was the weird. Counter attacking team. They yeah, the that's team. what I'm Leicester, saying. Leicester, Leicester have the option. We we're talking about the option of putting higher balls in the box. They have the option of putting the ball in behind. Yeah. City have that option of putting the ball in behind as well as playing with it. I think Leicester, he changed his tactics because of City. He did. Uh, and, and it worked. I mean, look, three penalties. Well, yeah, you play a, Three you, penalties. A worldy from Madison. Yeah. You can't really do nothing about. And Jamie Vardy's goal from open Jamie play. Jamie Vardy with the little back heel of the front, which... Which, which, which Edison, if... If Vardy hits that cleanly like he wanted to, he definitely didn't try to bounce that ball. If he hits that cleanly, Edison stops it. Vardy scored one of those against Germany too, didn't he? So it's yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. No, the one he's he done it before. The one he scored against Germany didn't bounce though. No, but this one's this one. He's, he's, as, the, he, as the ball's hitting the ground, he's he's hit it. To me, it doesn't it doesn't ma- it doesn't matter. Over. He's a clinical striker. He scored. Just, no, but I'm, ba- I'm backing up. You keep it because they, they kept on. Even I saw it. They kept on ragging on Edison, going, "Oh, he." No, it wasn't. It wasn't Edison's fault. He's too smart for Edison's gone and predicted that he's going to do that. It's just that it's it's bounced so high. Off the ground, yeah. But if Vardy, like, if Vardy's uh, meant that, because I know I've seen Suarez do that, where he's meant that's that. Unbelievable, and I, yeah. Yeah, and I said that with habits where he passed that he played for Giroud the other day. Tell you what, he did clever though, mate, and it's in defence of Garcia. 
when you watch the build up especially from above a, diff a different angle Garcia is holding his line and Jamie Vardy's in an offside position ahead of him oh, mm -hmm. just letting him he's yeah so, so the, because the ball wasn't played to him it was yeah inside or inside of down the right side that's how he's got the first run on Garcia I was looking to find out why Garcia wasn't mm -hmm. closer and then to give him the benefit of yeah, doubt watch it, it again weird. watch it again yeah. Vardy's already started in an offside position yeah. because he's not reading, he's not He's not going to get the first ball. He, knows, he, knows, he, he knows, knows what he's doing. Wide, I mean, Vardy, Vardy's yeah, exactly. a, a class striker. I mean, yeah. He, he yeah. knows it's either going over the top and he's winning the ball, or it's going out wide and he's getting ahead of his yeah. defender. You know, but to me, if... That's why Mars was so clinical. Yeah. Look, look, I, I want to... I, I'm being... Nobody likes, you don't like to see it. Nobody likes to see it. They come back today and I know it's a cup game. I know... It's not all the starters. But positive. But they've, they've run run right yeah. again. Look at it'll be a confidence booster, you know, it'll be Yeah, look at look at Laporte, the way Laporte set up the um Mendy to cross in the ball for uh uh Sterling's go second goal, I think it was. Laporte's played a ball with his right foot that split the the right back and the center back in for for yeah. Mendy to run. Fer, Ferran Torres looks like he's settling in. For his first goal. For his first goal. Uh yeah, Torres set up the second one for the tap in in the corner. Yeah, I feel the like it was. His left foot, mate. It came from. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. But 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 even ball. Laporte just splitting the defense like that on his yeah. weaker side as well. It just shows what Laporte's confidence does. And he, he played Ake and Laporte together, two left-footed mm -hmm. centre backs, which we we've, we've sort of touched on a little bit before. Laporte's Laporte makes a massive difference to City. Ferran Torres looked great today. Um, I mean, De Bruyne looked like De Bruyne, that you know. Rod, in. yeah, Rod. Sorry, to the, uh, I was talking about Leicester. Sorry. Rod, Rodri looked decent. You know, Fernandinho kept things steady at the back. Zach Steffen looked okay as a goalie. I mean, they were saying he's got Edison's distribution, or like he looks on track, which is ridiculous because. He's honestly, yeah. he, he's not, I mean, he's not expected to be that, nobody's expected to be that good, but he made some good, he made some good passes, you know, from, from his own box, but. but is that true today, the, <clears throat> they're looking to, to buy Alaba from Bayern? I saw that, and yeah, that came out, that broke yesterday, defender? because, sorry? Another defender? Are, are you, well, look, are he's, you he's 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 dynamic. He can play centre back. Oh, he no, can play yeah, left I'm back. Not saying, well, best I'm not saying don't get on him. This planet right now, yeah. I'm not saying don't get him. I think you know. I don't think that's going to go through. I think for some reason today, Mendy that goes through. That that solves all your problems. He can play defensive mid as well, Connie. He? he can play, which he does mid, for Austria. Which I don't think he would. No, in the Premier League, he can play left back perfectly, and he can play. Center look back after after player. for some reason. That or something else is lit a fire up Mendy's ass because today Mendy played like Mendy, like Monaco's Mendy did, you know. And I know Mendy's had his, I know he's had his injuries, and he wasn't fantastic today, but he, he looked like he was, he was well, look, sort look of what's back him, again. He was out for so long, and then when he comes yeah. back, it's halfway through COVID. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, look at you know, like Luke Shaw, I his injury ruined his career. Mendy's coming back from <laughs> something. <his> career. <laughs> He's doing the best he's ever done. He ruined his career when I he know, went to United, yeah. but I know, yeah. He, he looks. I'm just saying, like good as as he did. Yeah, I'm just saying, like four years on, yeah. It, it's Mendy looked. I, I thought Mendy looked good today. I'm not crazy, you know. Okay, Cole Palmer. Don't know what position he was meant to play. He was playing deep at the end. He was playing up front in the beginning. He just seemed like he he did okay. I mean, he's young, you know. He is fine, but. It, you know, there's not much I can say really about about his performance. Like it was okay, but like Sterling as well. It was back to last season. Ten chances on yeah. goal, scores two, which is like yeah. he was last season. And he still put away. You know, he, he still puts away the goals. So he's yeah. he's like a he's like a six year old kid. Like you know when you tell him like you take ten shots, you'll score one. Yeah. 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 And, but he's playing the good. odds. He's playing the odds, isn't he? But he. That's no, Max City are playing here. He, he set up Ferran, Ferran Torres' goal, didn't he? I don't actually don't know if it came off the centre back, but it it was a weird touch by him, and then it went and great finish by Torres. You know, I think he's promising for twenty million or whatever we got him for. Let's hope so. That's I mean, cheap today. Apparently, let's let's yeah. see. And I don't hope ill will on anybody, but Sane's injured for 
at least four weeks. <laughs> no, so he started on fire as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he did yeah. against Schalke. He sc I think he no, scored and set to him. No, I know, and it's just because I love Sane as a player, no, no. and Sane only yeah. spoke. Sane spoke so highly of Pep and City. I I really don't have any ill will towards him, but I'm bitter because of how good Sane is and yeah. was. And, will and I don't hope injury on anyone, but it's just. No. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm not really. I'm not happy. He's injured because I different league. Different. It doesn't matter anymore. Well, Bayern. He's still young. It's Man City and Bayern, are the best teams in the world right now. Can yeah. We, uh, can we get to the happy hammers? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, thought, I thought I covered Antonio earlier. <laughs> I wish we'd have done the podcast Monday. Yeah. Well, what? Well, actually, we sorry. What? what one last thing, though. One last thing. Come on. S sorry, City have apparently organized uh, an emergency transfer meeting and they're looking to sign two more big players on top of Diaz with one being a big signing so hopeful but the transfer window closes on Monday so anyway right. yeah, let's definitely move on to West Ham right after the shambles the start yeah after the shambles, you know I mean do you remember after the uh, after the um, <laughs> when he came back after the after the lockdown thing yeah They'd sort of changed and found a different mentality. We yeah, Suchek, recognized, Suchek we recognized the performance yeah. at Anfield after the performance at City. Recognized the performance at Anfield was a, a stepping stone, and and then they went on to win a couple of games after that. Yeah, and then played well at Arsenal, which was a game I was at, and but lost one nil. It's a similar sort of vein. They they picked it up at the Emirates. Yeah, and then and then stepped up again. With Wolves, I, I just I'm hoping that that the ball doesn't come because everybody was talking about their next six games. Yeah, you know, I think I did. Say we were Wolves. not worried about Wolves. Yeah, no, that, that's why I was I was talking about the cup. Sorry, not worried about Tottenham. Not worried about Leicester. Yeah, I don't know if they are they in the next six games. I know they're supposed yeah. to be. They are. Yeah, right. But but they've come out and they've they've dominated a fairly decent Wolves team. Yeah. Right. Great performance. From the off, you know. Portugal. Yeah, from the off, dominated them. Did everything that, that, that was after them. He's played three at the back, which seemed to suit. Uh, I've got to talk about Masuaku when he plays, if he does play further forward as a wing back. Yeah. Because as a, as a left back, he, he sleeps a lot and, and makes too many mistakes. He's out of position. But when he's, when he's there, he's got some ability. And when he plays... He he's he was on fire, mate. He was. I've amazing. always said that about him. He I've, was the best player. He just doesn't yeah. bring it enough. He's a, he's one of them on the cusp of being with your Lanzini, Anderson, yeah, that group of players that that are there now that everybody talks about have the ability but don't produce. And then there's a a, a group of players that do produce but don't have their ability. Mm -hmm. Master Walk, who's on that cusp, yeah, he just tipping over now he could actually and I've said it before he could make something of himself yeah he really could he has he has that ability. like a Man United fan, fan right now yeah <laughs> well I'm talking about somebody no no no, no 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 I'm talking yeah. what, what I didn't get I, what I, I didn't completely get, agree what I didn't get they go and dominate a, a Wolves team who were up there and could have could have scraped into Champions League and are no different if not they've Should strengthened have, yeah. they've strengthened now now I go and I go and watch the game today, which I shouldn't have. You know, it's a cup game. You don't know who he's going to put out. Yeah. But I was intrigued to see these fringe players, who are to me, it feels like we have like a hollow, hollow, hundred and fifty million pound out there. Yeah. You know the price is there of, of <clears throat> what these players cost or are worth, more cost than worth because they've slipped. But it feels like it's empty. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, looking at looking at the lineup, they look like look a, at the they, team. Look at yeah. the team they could play in the Premier League <clears throat> if they were all on their game. We've said that about West Ham before. The squad they have, if they're all performing, they're up there top six. Aren't yeah. They? Yeah. I was, I was literally well, say top six. they're up there top six. Top when ten. You look at that lineup today, and you're thinking seven or eight. Well, West Ham. And and you're thinking, hold on a minute. Yeah. Z, Anderson, Yarmolenko, Haller. 
you know, Noble was still out there. If, you know, if that team on paper, <clears throat> sorry, if that team, if that team on paper <laughs> was in the Europa League, you wouldn't buy it now. Yeah, that's true. You know, that's true. You go, oh, okay, I can, I can see Ming to. But the but but just now. comparing them against what Everton? you would call top six in well, the Premier I mean, League. I mean, but look at Sheffield United. Look at Man United. Look at Chelsea. Look at yeah. Spurs. Like. We're all, every, you just, but we're you, all but, but you can't just glue players together like West Ham have tried. What do you think it Chelsea have been big, doing the last? And it's not working. <laughs> it is. It is kind of 2012 me, Champions League. <laughs> on at the weekend, he had three at the back. So the biggest thing for me that he went to a back four and sat Declan Rice back there. He was still a great centre back. Yeah, I hate but, that. I hate him playing. But when, back, when but. that system has worked and it's your first win. When you're playing three at the back, Stick I don't care who the personnel are. Yeah. You go with the same system. I don't care if you're going... <laughs> there's no difference playing home or away while there's no fans there. Yeah. There's no real difference. We've seen that. You know? So why not? Even though it's different personnel, <clears throat> why not have a system where you say, this is it. This is what I'm going to believe in. I'm going to stick to it. We may lose a couple, but if we perform and we get it right like we did against Wolves and a couple of times last season against top teams... We, you know, it'll work for us. We'll win more than we lose. Yeah. You know, and, and so be it if we sit 10th, 11th. That's just as long as it's not a relegation fight anymore, you know? Yeah, like last build, season. Build on that. Anything. You can't go from relegation fight to top six in one season. I mean, especially if you had no real signings. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of whispers about I mean, about all, all, these, all these championship teams that have been doing it, like the, they, they can't look at that and think like that's the norm now. Like the Sheffield United, like Leicester, you know how like those teams like th which is kind of unheard of, you know. Like Leeds coming out like doing what they did. The West Ham have, have to look at those teams and think like not the likes of Leicester now because the consistency. There's almost they're better than those teams, themselves. you know. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. When have we they, or, or stop feeling sorry for themselves because they know they're a great team. They know well, the, they know become, the top that's eight. That's become an least. attitude of the players, mate. Exactly. Exactly. That's become an attitude of certain players who think they're better. Exactly. Than West Ham. Yeah. And that's that's probably the majority who play and against them. Which, which is which is what I hate because being an English, be, being an English, being someone that was born in England, if even if that you never. English. <laughs> yeah, even if you never played for West Ham, even if I had no affiliations whatsoever, let's say hypothetically I became a footballer, I would still have respect for West Ham because it's always West Ham won the World Cup, mm. you know? Yeah. Everyone says that. It's not just West Ham fans that say that. Yeah. You know, they say it the most. It's it's not but just them always, that say that. It was always there was every neutral's second team. You yeah. Know? yeah. Ex exactly. I couldn't describe I them more... Still if it's still that way today, I don't know, mate. I, I think there's still a lot of love from West Ham, from for West Ham. From a, I, I think it's we were talking about this the other day with the the solid fan bases of the likes of Newcastle, Liverpool, West Ham. Like you can't, they can't not be in the Premier League. They're they're yeah, they're a team. Well, they can't go down with the Olympic Stadium either because that would just be kind of ridiculous. Right, especially after leaving Upton Park, which I think. Look, I think I think. Mind. I think West Ham. I don't think West Ham will face the same fight they fought last season, especially if they continue to play like, uh, like they did against Wolves. I mean, you look at the team they put out today. To me, was ridiculously offensive. Not like offensive, but like. But do, they're not going for. They're not going for the cup. They're not going for the cup. Attacking. No, I know. Yeah, but like you know, it's. Uh, but like we we're, we're talking. There were three about, defenders. We were talking about this. West Ham have the biggest shit list right now in the in the Premier League. They yeah. Have the worst. Um, fixture out of anyone and that was assigned to them and one team has to take that yeah that team that has to take that doesn't give a fuck about the Cubs you know if they no, just I agree. Yeah. yeah. who cares but they still played you know? I mean like y you look at it and you think they're starters I mean well I guess not I know but then a starter <clears throat> Declan can Rice in really 90 minutes you know? I mean yeah so when, when who... they put Declan Rice as a center back you know you know they're already yeah you know? But look, That's here's the, here's the thing we right also there. haven't spoken about either is Everton basically put out their first team and Everton have been on fire. More importantly, Calvert yeah. Lewin, Calvert Lewin's yeah, been on goals. fire. You said eight goals in <clears throat> so many games or something like that. 
That, I mean, he's See, got that, what? How many hat tricks has he got already? He's got at least two, if you count two. the league. He's got four in one game, I think, yeah. Yeah. In the league. But, yeah, Brom, but this... West Brom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but welcome, welcome to, you know, like... You Which we it. didn't even actually talk about West Brom and Chelsea, but... I, I want to I yeah. talk about it. Because yeah, I, yeah. I, want, I wanted to make a yeah. PSA um, about Thiago Silva, which you pointed out about yeah. calling the fucking Premier League slow. And then doing what he did. But first, first of all, though, just back to West Ham, yeah, though. Sorry, sorry. Who I saw, I saw some things on Twitter. I didn't see a name, but they said they'd sign someone, or they was real close to signing someone. I didn't see who, who West Ham, who they were talking about. Because I think I've seen rumors with West Ham a bunch signing they, someone. They, 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 Imagine they, if they got they, Barkley. Imagine if they got yeah. Barkley on loan instead of Aston Villa. Yeah. Imagine if Chelsea played Barkley yeah. <laughs> instead of getting loaning out to Aston Villa. Are you shitting me? That I woke up to that today and I'm I was almost as furious about the William Arsenal thing. That's this, this is the big thing with West Ham. <laughs> they made offers like you know, there, there was talk about Tarkovsky. They seem to be desperate for a centre back. There's, there's another, I think, a, a player from is it Slavia Prague, I'm not sure. But but it always seems to be that the club want this much. 40 million, West Ham offer 30 million. Yeah. Or 20 million, West Ham offer 15 million. Low ballers. It's almost as if as they don't really want him. Yeah. Yeah, it's you like but look, a name on the paper. Are they appeasing the supporters? Or are they? Yeah. But this still goes back to us. and The deadline's the fifth, right? Yeah. Right. It doesn't even bear thinking or talking about. You know, after this weekend, there's the international break again. So yeah. you're looking at three weeks, two and a half weeks. But, so but the, the deadline will have gone by then. Yeah, so Monday. Me, but, I'd, rather look at, I'd rather look at the next league game after this weekend and say, who's there, who isn't, who did they get? Was was they honest in what they were doing, trying to buy people? Or has it, has it come that the fans were right and saying it's all bluff? Well, yeah. Also, but... also, Tarkovsky worth forty million. My ass. No. Tarkovsky, like they're really asking 40, 30, 40 million for him. Today, today's price. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, today's COVID. Let's talk about like COVID, oh, COVID price. Prices. Okay. You um, know. Yeah, that's that's a little wild. I I just I don't mind him. I, I love West Ham. I. But it, London team that has nothing to do with me. Like I I love West Ham to death. I, I just want to say I, like we just said with West Ham on paper, I, th- I think if West, like the way you're talking, if you're talking from West Ham point, a fan point of view, I think that's a little greedy, and I think what's greedy saying that they need to sign people in the window, and it's like you have three, I think at least three Champions League players, if not on the cusp of Europa League. And for a team, enough. for a team that just survived, it's not working. Yeah, I know. So, so what no. do you what what do you do? What what Players you want to you, you want to sell you want to sell them all and kind of start well, new with happened. no talent? Or They're not David Moyes' players. I know, but you also, but I mean, look at the likes of Watford who just went down, and Troy Deeney's like, I'm a Premier League player, even though he's been so true to Watford. I mean, look at the likes of any Aston Villa Aston Villa player. I, I was going to say they're all bad, but they're not all bad. They're not. They're not, they're not West Ham, you know. West no. Brom, West Brom on West Ham, you know. Yeah. There, there's there's so many teams that on West Ham, and West Ham are just underperforming, and they're kind of known for doing that, and they kind of like they kind of like the um I hate to say it because Chelsea stay at the top of the league for some fucking god no knows reason why I have no idea why we stay in the top four. But it's like West Ham are just like well, everyone else is shit. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. I know, but it, and also like, finished well, Chelsea finished twelfth, three seasons, four seasons ago. Yeah, that's fine. That's, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just rubbing it in. Yeah, I know that's fine, but I mean this season thirteen. How many, champi- how <laughs> right, many Champions up. League trophies? All right, so sorry, it doesn't matter. Mind. But West Ham on a bottom ten team one. on paper. So one. So how many is that? Oh, that's. Champions League, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's one more than you. <laughs> so that's two more big ears than you. So uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know. Look, it's yeah, you just. Know what, as well, the the, the West Brom game with Chelsea. Yeah. Look, look, 
Look, Sorry, West, I, West Ham should be judged. Yeah. West Ham should be judged. Oh, yeah, yeah. Play. I, yeah, I, I just wanted to say that. I, I honestly, I wouldn't judge another team without judging my own team. And I judge my own team more than yeah, I judge no. any well, other team get, on this fucking team. planet. We, we, we'll we, don't get, ha- we don't have to. That could be the extended cut where I they, sit there for an hour, punching a bag, or... The, the big thing for me, right, is these players today, the ones who played today, should be out there busting a the gut, trying to impress, to be part of... Are you talking about Chelsea? No, West Ham. No, oh, okay. West Ham. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag on the West Ham. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Chelsea. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, we get to Chelsea. No, no, no we, we don't have to. But they on. should be out there busting a gut to prove that they belong in the league team. Yeah. No, it's not. It's not first team reserves. Reserves. No. It's a, it's a Premier League and a cup team, isn't it? Yeah. They should be busting a gut. They didn't show that for me. The players that are on the on the fringe or on the cusp, yeah. who have also been scoring in the competition as well. They've been scoring and creating, but look, okay, maybe they hadn't come up against anybody really, or but Everton showed today. It showed today. They didn't. They there's something wrong with their temperament. There's a few of them players that their attitude and temperament for me. I think that causes unrest as well, you know. So so that limits the squad and shrinks the squad. And we're saying like all the players they've got, but the squad has been shrunk because a lot of them players couldn't come in because they're not of the right they're not of the right temperament and the right attitude right now yeah okay to well, come in and perform okay so it's, it's like it's like not having them players in a sense but okay but how how is you as a person or you as a West Ham player like we just said and I just reiterated this I was oh, once God. yeah <laughs> all right there you go try fill this in so you got Lanzini um, Anderson, uh, Yarmolenko, I think try actually tries when he's on the pitch. Yeah. I, I, I love yeah, Yarmolenko. I'll give, I'll give you that, yeah. Okay, but you're talking about three world class players on paper. If they're against you, they should they should be finished. That team should be finishing top five, top six, top top seven at least this- with those three pl- players. Okay, but those those other players must know, or they train with them. 10 times a week in different training sessions Lanzini Anderson oh, I'm talking about they do double sessions a day so yeah. and probably stop on fucking Wednesdays but whatever but um, how do you not see the likes of Lanzini Anderson and Yarmolenko getting all the limelight and thinking well they're not performing when they play for when they put the shirt on so what if I when I play in their positions I perform What? why can't people be like uh, like oh like this little raggedy player has been filling in for Anderson and has been killing it, you know why 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 don't they? Like, it's it baffles me so much that there's so much tension and so much problems with West Ham when they they have it all, you know like they have they it's have done, mate. they have it, you yeah. know you know they they just like like you just said with all these the cup players if, though why why aren't they performing fired, though no, like, if, if that squad was fine there'd be no need to buy anyone ever that's why I'm talking if about if that squad was fine yeah. there'd be no need and there'd be no talk there'd be no unrest how many times do, how many times how, how many Leicester fans do you think are talking about the transfer window they were shit in their pants when Conte and Mahrez left yeah. now look at them you know Conte left everyone's playing them in a wrong position at Chelsea Mahrez left <clears throat> Danny, Danny, Danny drink water. Well. Oh, yeah, seen. he went to Chelsea as well. He's back at Leicester, though, isn't he? I'll tell you what I've seen. I've seen Haller come on, right? He come on against Wolves with about three minutes left, and he scores a header and doesn't celebrate. Doesn't celebrate, yeah. Oh, so dog. Me, it's like, you know, I'm better than this. Look, I've scored a goal, but oh, I'm still okay. not happy. I want you all to know that I'm still not happy. Yeah, there's, but, only one way to, but, there's only one way to prove yourself. There's only one way to say I need to be the first on that team sheet is go out and go and get goals. But you, if you're bought for that much money specifically to bank goals in. Now, people can say, OK, he hasn't had the service. He was playing up front on his own. Antonio's played up front on his own. Mm-hmm. And got how many goals? Was it eight goals in the last six, seven games, whatever it was? Yeah, but you're also talking about all season as well. That, that was the best he ever did. But he's still sh- he's still showing it though. He stepped up, mate. He stepped did, up. Did he? Did he? Or he did step up. Did he step up, or did things just fall to him? No, 
He stepped up his work rate. What the hundred percent? The four goals he scored that game. Have you seen those goals? Have you yeah, seen, have no, you seen I know. I'm just, I'm just saying. But Chelsea. he was in. But he that put himself in, in those positions. Those... He put himself in those positions, he, though. It was, it was literally like. It was literally like it fell to him. I think there was and, a and he's no. He was good enough to finish it. I think there was a feeling yeah, around I, I, West. There was a feeling around West Ham last season where they were dropping. It, 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 yeah, it no, took no, everyone. I agree. I, I agree. But like that's not, that's an, to me that's Antonio. I'm not, ta- I'm not taking his defense work a, a, away from it in any way, shape, or form. I'm not taking that. I'm not talking. Uh, you know, I'm not talking about runs that he's making that he should have been played in. Yeah. I'm just talking about those things. I because I hate that. I hate <laughs> someone getting bulled up. For scoring eight goals, Antonio though I, that's that's the player he is though. Well, well, I mean, maybe I'm being a little biased because of what happened at Chelsea where he's dove and then got back up and he scored. Yeah, I mean, but, but that was part of the three didn't, games. Didn't Pulisic that yeah, dive that game as well, like a he, little he bit? Got a, he got a penalty, but he didn't. He did. Uh, no, he did he, dive yeah, that I same know, game. I know, but this this dive. I know, I, I know. He's gone down and he's got back up, and that was the moment Antonio no, fell no, out of favor for you. No, 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 no. Like we were saying about the young lad at City. Antonio's goals should be a bonus for him. Liam Delaps, yeah. He should be, yeah. Antonio should be somewhere else, a supporting role. He shouldn't be the main striker. Yeah, exactly. One thousand percent. He's yeah. banging goals in. Yeah. And that's what yeah. Hallow was bought for. You know, for him to play off somebody like 100%. that. One hundred percent. And if yes. you said he got eight goals a season, that would be brilliant. Yeah. As long as you had that centre forward, that natural but goal, he I, was banging. Exactly. Yeah. Antonio's good enough to play up top. With someone supporting him, though, not doing it by himself, to where it, it might like the likes of playing against a three, and he's on the and and they have the ball seventy percent of the time, they're gonna be a back five on the halfway line, and mm. he's just running across the halfway line yeah. for an hour and a half. If you notice, if you you know? notice with the, I think it was a three four three. Or a three, three, that, five. That's, yeah, yeah. Against Wolves, course, Bowen was getting himself. Centrally. Yeah, we didn't I talk about looks, Bowen. He looks like he knows how to finish. Yeah, and he needs to be getting in them positions a little. Bit I, I said, I said it to you. He reminds me, and I not just Lee Bowen, yeah, 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 not just because his name. He sat. He reminds me of a, a little. If he was a little sh- shorter, a less scrappier L- Lee Bowen, because he can finish, and he 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 works. You know, he. I still don't think that's his position. No, that's I that I think that you hit the nail on the head with that, and I, I think I agree with that on Lee Bowyer. I think that four four two that um, they used to play pretty much. I don't think Lee Bowyer is a winger. I think Lee Bowyer would have suited today's. Um, I'm not saying Lee Bowyer is one of the best players, or whatever. I'm just saying uh, that Bowen reminds me of him, and I think Lee Bowyer would suit today's style of play better than he would have back then <coughs> because he was that little like, you know. I think. I think- I think if they had everything working out for them, uh, they had a... Which, which is what they don't. They don't. Everything's against... It's it's like City. Everything's against City. Everything's against West Ham. It's like it's like there's too much drama going on. It's like yeah, other, clubs, they, other clubs don't have these problems. If they had a focal you know? point, like, like Halle, if they had a focal point who you knew was going to get goals, they had, they had a supporting cast of Bowen... Antonio yeah. and a firing Lanzini or a firing Felipe Anderson, yeah. that would be as good as anything, I think. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, I yeah, I mean, I take, take top away, seven, top eight, yeah, yeah, that's, e- easy that's, though, they, e- they like com- comfortably, fire. like comfortably top seven, yeah. fighting top four, maybe. Mm. Yeah. I, I'm not, talking about, no, like, not losing, fighting top four, dude. Uh, t- fighting, I mean, uh, see, West Ham. Hold on, you're a city well, fan. Season. You're I a love, season. I love, I love West Ham, and they're they're a hundred percent a top eight team, but they're not fighting for top four. Okay, so, so I'm a, I'm a. What was going on last season? I, yeah, that? exactly, exactly. Nobody, nobody wanted. To oh finish. no, no, no. It's been, it's been like, it's been like that the last four, four seasons. All right. I'm sorry. I think, I think you get, I think you get, you get ahead of yourself. No, no, no. I'm saying, I, I'm sorry as a city fan that you're just only struggling with winning the league. No, the last top four. The, the top four, uh, yeah, like right. third, so fourth, Chelsea fifth, sixth. Trying to throw it away. The yeah, last five years yeah. has been <clears throat> the worst I've ever seen. I, I agree. I agree. But you've got West Ham finishing 16th. All right. Wolves. 17, uh, 17th. Wolves, I think, I think what he's Jordan, saying. Jordan, if Wolves, showed, Leicester, and Sheffield United yeah. were all competing for top four. I, uh, I think what he's saying we're is... We're all they, competing for top four. Why can't West Ham? 
West Ham are better than Sheffield United. Nah. They are. They weren't last season. No, we- I haven't Sheffield seen, United had a better run. I haven't seen West Ham play like Sheffield United played last season in a, are, in a while. Wolves are arguably only just a tiny bit better than West Ham. Yeah, I just I just think you're getting ahead of yourself saying West Ham should be fighting for top four. You're talking to someone that... I know. Always fights for top four. Yeah. You know, I, I know what the top four... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not talking about top... I'm not talking about the top two positions. You guys have that filled. You said top four, I know. I, know I, I mean three, four, five, six, and maybe seventh, all competing for the last two positions okay. for the Champions League. That, I guess, I guess, I uh, yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. I, I didn't mean no one's competing for Liverpool or uh, City. No I'm not... Yeah, I'm no not... One's touching you that's guys. top two. I'm, I, West Ham finished fourth. That would be the probably the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard right now. If West Ham hey, finished four, all last season started, mate. I said they could be top six. Top yeah. six is fine. Yeah. I'd say yeah, top six is started, fine. With... Top eight is realistic. Look yeah. at the top seven. Okay, they've Look... got they've got they've got some steps to take. Look at because... third place to seventh place. The last four or five. I get years, it. I get it. So close. I get it. I get it. I to me, I love West Ham. They're not. They need to. They need to work on getting in the top half of oh, the table. Yeah. No. 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 I'm not saying... I just... Yeah. Top four, ridiculous. That's the most All absurd right, thing no, I've ever no, heard. No, no, the standard's been set down. The bar's been lowered. I, I get it, but there's... It, I, I know every team was thrown away third and fourth place last season. I, I, and has I completely get it. Seasons. Yeah. Maybe... Last five's maybe going back a bit too far. I mean, dude... I but could, I'm just yeah. saying, it, nobody's going to... Yeah. Okay. If, if West Ham finished fourth, I'd be shocked. Yeah. But I, if it... You know, I, I, if the last, if, if how everything's been going on the last couple of seasons, I wouldn't be that surprised. I, think, I look, wouldn't I be that surprised. I think, and it's not impossible. I think if you, if you threw West Ham in, with with the likes of now anyway, with the likes of Tottenham, Man U, and Arsenal, from last season, they could have easy. Exactly. Wait, West Ham from when though? When are you, when are you talking about, like oh, okay, but like, he's saying we're talking okay, okay, now West we're talking we're talking hypothetical fairy tales now, right, which is just but, 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 we're talking you're, about the squad that they have. Exactly. Like, okay, the individual players. No, no, you're talking about Chelsea. That's Tot- fine. No, no, Chelsea, Tottenham, uh, Man United and Everton have a deeper squad than West Ham will ever have yeah. in their life, you know? Uh, I mean, in all okay. life. I, well, no, the thing no. is that that's who they could be up there competing <clears throat> with. I, I 100%. Could I, I, couldn't yeah. agree, I, I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree anymore. Could be, but they didn't. Anyway, yeah, let's, get to, let's get to your, your boys now, gone before. No. All right, so that was five pints in. Well, look, apparently, and, uh, apparently we're, we're 25 pints in because, you know, I don't want to offend any West Ham fans listening because I love West Ham and they are top eight. No, but right. oh, but no, if no, no, but no, if no, anyone no, if no. anyone believes West Ham's top four, I, I mean, no, no, no. I'm, put I'm the only, put the I'm put only, the drugs down. I'm you know, only saying West Ham are top four because of how shit. The, okay, the but you're you're you're, you're 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 almost just you're almost just expressing your disdain for Chelsea right now through through this. One hundred percent. Okay. It's not just Chelsea, is it? What he's saying. But but that's where it's coming from. No 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 no. It's football in general. Because I've been I've been alive. What he's trying to say is you've got Liverpool, Man City. And for them other two spots, why can't West Ham be Leicester, well, Arsenal, Tottenham, one year, Chelsea now? Why can't they be? They could beat them. They could beat them in one game. No, no, no. They could okay. Do, they could do exactly what they. They do. can't hold out the whole season yeah, the way can. Chelsea, Tottenham, Leicester, well, they Wolves. Don't, they ship. don't have the depth of the squad that like. If you okay, could, but you're saying they do. You're saying West Ham no, no, are a top four team. No, like I said, if you look at West Ham on paper, three of those people aren't. Don't start. They I don't get play. it, but I'm looking you know, at it like, through through the lens of I'm looking play. at it through the lens of reality where Felipe Anderson needs to go, saying, cash him I'm in. Saying what it could anyway, be. I'm saying what it could be. <clears throat> okay. Well this is a this is a non conversation. So Chelsea. Hold on, I I, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. That was that was terrible as well. No, too, I know. Yeah. No, they're, they're not no, terrible. Like they're not terrible. I mean, if you really, if you both actually want to talk about them, I'm fine talking about them. They're doing all right. They, they are, they're doing exactly how I expected them to. Exactly, again, exactly. trying to paste together players exactly, from yeah, different, yeah, yeah. you know. The point, they're gluing different puzzle pieces into. Yeah. Fucking, yeah and they're clipping, clipping yeah. ends off and, and jamming so, them in. But, you know, that may be a pretty picture at the end of the season. Next, I think next season or the season after, 100%. Here's the thing. We've Look, given, we gave. I think this team, 
in next season will be trouble. In I think Champions so. League. I'd give them a season to play together. I I think they're incredible players. I think yeah. Tim Timo Werner yeah. Timo Werner doesn't have a first touch, but like if someone else can do it for him, he can score. He's got Did the you pace. Go I didn't watch the I was, game. I, I don't oh. see him scoring if he's if he's dropping as deep. That's no. Or yeah, playing on right. the or playing on the wing, he needs to play down yeah. the middle. Just, just yeah, look at the, the end of the day. Centre forwards like that. Harry Kane does it for England. Yeah. You're not getting a touch. You're not getting a touch of the ball. You're gonna come deep. Yeah, you're I know. Be involved in a game. Yeah, like, but I he, see him doing that. He's also three 0 down against West Brom, so it's you know you kind of oh. you kind of do just want to poke your your toe on the <clears> ball. <throat> you know, you kind of. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't blame him coming that deep when you're three 0 down when the the defense is. The worst defense. No, uh, okay. It's a terrible defense, and they're not moving the ball no, forward. No, no, you we actually, no, we, we, we well, I'm just saying in that moment, they're the worst defense in the league. Well, do you, I know that that's it, that's it, that's extreme. I don't really believe do that. Know, do you know last season, our statistics for our defense had the worst out of any other defense? I don't. League? I'm also bitter about Thiago e- Silva saying the relegation teams. I didn't know that, but Thiago Silva said the Premier League's slow, and then he goes and. Yeah, does what he does. I, I wish, I, I forgot, which I loved. I, I forgot who it was, but I wish when they were running past him, they clipped him on the head. Yeah, like, but I don't blame Werner trying to come back if the ball's not moving yeah, from from the back line to yeah. the midfield. It, it, you're getting frustrated. Big, you know? big blow going out the cup early as well, mate. I yeah, tough losing, losing to Jose. Yeah. But did you see the? Did you see Eric Dyer? Did you see the video of uh, Jose and um, assistant manager running down the... They chased Dyer down the, to- the toilet. No, 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 no. no, not that one. Oh. No, after they won the game when they... Oh, no, I when, didn't see um, it. Mount missed the penalty. Go, Jose... I'm gonna, the funniest... I've gotta, I'm going to read it out as well. The funniest thing about the weekend. Yeah. Did, did you see Mourinho's interview? Yeah. Uh, about, Di- about the Dyer situation? No, no. Oh. After the Newcastle game. No, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. going to read it. I'm going to read it. We kept them away from our box. We know the danger of the box. Every box is an 18-yard box. <laughs> but there are boxes and boxes. <laughs> and we know that the Tottenham box is a special box. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? He also... Is... So it's... much that I have to record it. <laughs> Wait, you mean that, that poetry that you just read? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, yeah, I don't know how many boxes was, was in there. He said something about Man United as well. He's like, sometimes the final whistle's the final whistle unless you're Tottenham. Like, right. he was, you know, he's he's referring to the Man United pen- penalty. Who is that well, again? He speaks in hieroglyphs. He speaks in haikus. Yeah, haikus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, was it two seven? I don't know. Yeah. Two five seven. seven, <laughs> seven. So. Eight. A box is a box unless it's Tottenham's yeah, a box. Box is a box unless it's a box. <laughs> no, he's a he, lyricist. He's, he's always en- yeah, he's always entertaining. You all know the Tottenham box is a special box. <laughs> he's talking about the VAR box. That's why. <laughs> Might be the box that they shipped Ali out Ali out in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, he's gonna play the next game because he's hopefully a professional. They, hopefully, they didn't poke holes in it. <laughs> All right, guys. You'll probably dive in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'll be waiting well, I, for a penalty. I, yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say it. Shit, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, guys. Balls, 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 testicles, sacks. That everyone has to drink. I don't know how. Oh, many. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. I do want to talk about a special shirt signing opportunity that we have, though, that we spoke about in the last episode. So, in partnership with, a, in relation to our partnership with Manscaped, if you purchase your Manscaped again for that that twenty percent off and free shipping at Manscaped.com using the code Bish, you will get a signed shirt. Um, now we've been talking about the the shirt that we want to do. So simply send in your your receipt, email your receipt to five pints in at gmail dot com, and let us know the team you support. And we could even get you know from Man City, we could get a, re- uh, a Wembley ninety nine shirt that you could sign, um, you know, well, a e- replica shirt. Even yeah, if yeah. It's a, even if you listen to the podcast and you don't support any of the teams that we talk about, and you don't want him to sign a shirt. <laughs> You know, like we, we'll, we'll give you a, we'll send you a shirt for winning the raffle, you know? 
Maybe. maybe. Don't forget there's only one. I'll sign the shirt. Everybody doesn't get one. No, no, just one. We're gonna pick one one winner. We'll we'll do it live so no Man City fan wins. (laughs) But um, that's not true. Yeah. So so if you we'll do it fair, obviously. Yeah, I mean the thing. Look, the thing is, you need to trim your bush, right? Like, the, the, let's get into this seriously because yeah. there's a lot of people listening who are probably, it's a foreign idea to them. You know, it, that's why. Well, my, yeah, I said this earlier. For, I mean, if you're talking about a 40 year old, for 40 years, he's always known, don't <laughs> go near my balls with the balls. Yeah. I mean, and look at you. You found crisp packets, you found yeah. beer cans down there. I mean, it's 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 been a while. I remember when I was a kid, I used to find rubber bands and I used to have to give them to you because you said that's how you used to tie your balls off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, if you've got... He was the creator of a man bun. If you've, got, <laughs> if you've got dreadlocks down there, you need this lawnmower yeah. 3.0. I mean, the best thing that we haven't even spoke about is it's got a light, it's, it's it's got scary, a light on it. You yeah, know? I know. Yeah, I know. It's scary at first because obviously you don't want to go near your balls with that thing. Yeah. Because so you know, e- every single... Man on this planet has nicked their That balls. was bad for me because I didn't want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> so you turned the light off. You well, took the well, bulb the out thing. of the. <laughs> well, that's the thing. They, it would start. It would start bleeding before you even notice. Yeah. And this one doesn't. You just so. look at it and turn it on the. Like, it was like when you're creeping. <laughs> yeah. Speaking like of creeping. <laughs> like you're creeping in at four o'clock yeah. in the morning. Sorry, and sorry, audience. Of... He's just showed his balls. <laughs> Why you creeping in at four in the morning and the security light goes on? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it looks at you like wasn't me. Yeah, but look, it's it's not the nineties anymore. Get that George H W Bush out of there. You protect. Um, you protect. You, you. No matter how old you are, no matter how saggy you are, no matter how loose your fucking sack is, or young or young you are. Yeah, or, yeah, and you just have a. Disability. Either way, it will not nick your sack. The technique's the bat wing. You know, for example, okay. there's, there's multiple. Well, we'll put a we'll put a special video yeah. on Patreon on Patreon of Connor a, doing a, a yeah a how to tutorial on how to shave just one ball. Yeah, <laughs> you got. I'm gonna hold you to that now. Yeah. So anyway, as Manscaped would put it, let's get that bush to tush clean. Make your testies their besties. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BISH. That's B-I-S-H at manscaped.com. And again, if you go make your purchase, email in the receipt to fivepintsin at gmail.com. And we'll have Ian sign a shirt um, of the current season season of your choosing. Or maybe a retro replica shirt um, yeah. of your choice, you know, as long as it's available. I'm going to enter it and get a Chelsea retro. Well, I'm not sign it. <laughs> that that's on you. At least it's yeah. a sale for us. But that's twenty percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code Bish. Your balls will thank you. Drink up, guys. Cheers, fellas. Cheers. I do also want to add we launched a new shirt on uh fivepintsin.com slash shop. It's the Ref BI uh top ten most wanted for diving shirt. Um we had a little bit of backlash on on Twitter, but let's, we, let's not we, talk we had, about. I mean, we also had backlash with each other. It took. Who cares? To, no, no, no. I'm just saying. You know? it, t- it took forever for us to. Um, well, we hate so many we players. Had, we had to come to a compromise. Cause yeah. Three. There was a hundred divers, and we picked ten. I think that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. And we could have picked another top. Oh my god. We, yeah. We could have, yeah. Only so many names fit on a shirt, so just make sure you go to fivepintsin.com. It, look. We've only fitted on Connor's shirt, though. Yeah. Look, if, if you support, if you support the, 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 if you support the game not having divers, then you need the shirt. Well, I mean. That's how I'm going to put it. Well, with all due respect, like, like, it's just knowing these 10 players. Yeah. I, whether you like watch Sheffield United or not, you know whether you watch a certain team or not. There's cheaters in your league, and they're gaining points because yeah, the cheat. So if you wear the shirt, it yeah. gets them out. Uh, <laughs> I mean, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully that it's a it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. This is our VAR with the yeah. funds that we have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, check it out, guys. com slash shop, and remember. Um, you know, to give us a like on on the on the platform you're listening to. Well, guys, this has been a great episode, and I think we're just about out of beer. So to finish mine, I'm gonna say, balls, balls, nuts, balls. 
and uh, thanks for tuning in. Cheers, guys. <laughs>